The Devoted Friend by Oscar Wilde Once upon a time, there was a kind and honest man named Hans. He lived alone in a tiny cottage and worked hard in his garden every day. In all the countryside, there was no garden as lovely as his. Flowers of all kinds blossomed under his touch and made the garden a thing of beauty. Their sweet fragrance filled the air. Little Hans had many friends, but his closest friend was Hugh the Miller. Hugh was so devoted to little Hans that he always stopped at the garden to pluck sweet herbs or fill his pockets with plums and cherries. Real friends should have everything in common, the Miller liked to say. Hans nodded and smiled and felt very proud of having a friend with such noble ideas. The neighbours thought it strange that the rich miller never gave Hans anything in return, though he had sacks of flour in his mill, six milch cows and a large flock of sheep. Hans never worried about these things though and worked away happily in his garden through summer, winter and autumn. But when winter came, he had no fruit or flowers to bring to the market. He suffered from cold and hunger, eating only a few dried pears or some hard nuts for supper. He was also very lonely, as the miller never came to see him. There is no good seeing little hands now, for when people are in trouble, they should be left alone. That is my idea about friendship. I shall pay him a visit in spring. He will be able to give me a large basket of primroses. That will make him happy. You are certainly very thoughtful about others, agreed his wife, sitting in her comfortable armchair. But could we not invite Hans here? said the miller's youngest son. If he came here, son, and saw our warm fire and good supper, he might get envious. Envy is a most terrible thing and leads people to temptation. He might ask for some flour on credit and that I could not give. Flour is one thing, friendship is another. I will not allow Hans's nature to be spoilt. I am his best friend and will always watch over him. When the primroses began to open after winter, the miller decided to see Hans. He went down the hill with a basket on his arm. Good morning, Hans. How have you been all winter? said the miller. I had rather a hard time, but now that spring has come, I am happy. We often talked of you during the winter, Hans, said the miller. I was afraid you had forgotten me. Friendship never forgets, said the miller. Now, how lovely your primroses are looking. Indeed, said Hans. I'm going to sell them and buy back my wheelbarrow with the money. Did you sell it? What a very foolish thing to do. Well, I had to. This winter I had no money to buy bread. I first sold the silver buttons on my Sunday coat, then my silver chain and at last my wheelbarrow. But I am going to buy them all back again now. Hans, said the miller, I will give you my wheelbarrow, even though its one side is gone and the wheel spokes are uneven. That is, because I think that generosity is the essence of friendship. Besides, I have a new wheelbarrow for myself. Well, I can repair it with a plank of wood I have in the house, said Hans. A plank of wood, said the miller, that is just what I need to mend the roof of my barn. I have given you my wheelbarrow. Now you are going to give me your plank. Of course, the wheelbarrow costs far more than the plank. But true friendship never notices things like that. Certainly, cried Hans and ran inside to drag the plank out of the shed. Hmm, it is not a very big plank, said the miller looking at it. I am afraid that after I have mended my barn roof, there won't be any left to mend the wheelbarrow. Since I have given you my wheelbarrow, give me some flowers in return. Here is the basket. Fill it quite full. Quite full, said Hans sorrowfully, for he knew that if he filled it, he would have no flowers left for the market and he was very anxious to get his silver buttons back. I thought that in true friendship there is no selfishness. My best friend, cried little Hans, you can have all the flowers in my garden. I would rather have your good opinion than my silver buttons. He plucked all his pretty primroses and filled the miller's basket. Goodbye, Hans, said the miller, 
as he went up the hill with a plank on his shoulder and the big basket in his hand. Goodbye, said little Hans, and began to dig away merrily, so pleased was he about the wheelbarrow. The next day, the miller came with a large sack of flour on his back. Dear little Hans, would you carry this sack of flour for me to market? I am really very busy, began Hans. It is rather unfriendly of you to refuse. Oh, I don't wish to be unfriendly, said Hans. He picked up the heavy sack with some difficulty and placed it on his shoulders and trudged off. It was a hot day and the road was terribly dusty. After five miles, Hans was so tired that he had to sit down and rest. However, he went on and at last reached the market. He sold the sack of flour for a very good price and returned home. The next morning, the miller came to get his money, but Hans was still in bed. You are very lazy, said the miller. I will give you my wheelbarrow, so you must work harder. I am very sorry, said Hans, rubbing his eyes. But I was so tired. I want you to come up to the hill and mend my barn roof for me. Hans was very anxious, for his flowers had not been watered for two days. But he did not like to refuse the miller, as he was such a good friend. He went up to the barn and worked till sunset. There is nothing as delightful as the work one does for others, said the miller, who had come to see how Hans was getting on. It is such a privilege to hear you talk about such lofty ideas, said Hans. Do you think I'll ever be able to speak like that? In time. Now you know how to be a good friend. If you work harder, you will learn to talk about it eloquently as well. But now go home and rest, for I want you to drive my sheep to the mountain tomorrow. The miller kept sending him on long errands every day or got him to help at the mill. Hans's flowers suffered, for he never had time to look after them. One evening, Hans was sitting by his fireside. It was a stormy night and the wind was roaring around the house. There was a loud rap at his door. It was the miller with a lantern in one hand. Dear Hans, cried the miller, my little boy has hurt himself and I have to get the doctor but he lives so far away. It would be much better if you went instead. I'm going to give you my wheelbarrow. You should do something for me in return. I'm glad you came to me. I will start off at once, said little Hans. Do lend me your lantern. It's very dark and I might fall into the ditch. But it is my new lantern. I don't want anything to happen to it, said the miller. Well, I can do without it too, cried Hans. He took down his great fur coat, tied a muffler around his neck and started off. But he could hardly see anything and could scarcely stand against the strong wind. Still, he walked for three hours and arrived at the doctor's door. Who is it? cried the doctor. It's me, Hans. The miller's son has hurt himself and wants you to come at once. All right, said the doctor. He ordered his horse, his big boots and lantern and rode off in the direction of the miller's house. Hans trudging behind him. The storm grew worse. Soon, Hans lost his way and wandered off on the moor. The moor was full of deep holes and there, poor Hans was drowned. At Hans's funeral, the miller was the chief mourner. As I was his best friend, he said, I should have the best place. He walked at the head of the procession and every now and then wiped his eyes with a big handkerchief. This is a great loss to everyone, said the blacksmith. Everyone nodded in agreement. Did anyone tell the miller that he had wronged his devoted friend? None did. But the miller complained to anyone who would hear. It's a great loss to me. I almost gave him my wheelbarrow. Now I don't know what to do with it. It is in such bad shape that I could not get anything for it if I sold it. I will certainly not give away anything again. So saying, he went on his way.